Hey, what is going on everyone? Welcome back. Or if it's the first time here, where have you been? I've been doing these lists for over a year and this is the first time you show up? Anyway, welcome to the world according to Briggs. Today we're going to look at the positive side of Denver. The last video was about the negative side of living in Denver or moving to Denver. And I have to tell you, it was hard to find negatives about Denver. I mean, they have all the issues any other city is going to have, like crime, drugs, homeless. But none of them are terribly bad. Denver is one of the country's finest cities, and I'm sure it's not for everyone, like the person that's about to leave a comment about how it sucks and everything else like that. Stop typing. Sorry the Mile High City hasn't been very kind to you. But there's a reason it's one of the most moved-to cities in the U.S. Most people love it. And Colorado is one of the country's most moved-to states. And in this video, I'm going to list some of the reasons why you might want to move there in my top 10 reasons to move to Denver, Colorado. Number 10, clean streets. One of the first things you will notice about anything is if it's dirty or not. Thankfully, Denver residents don't have to worry about dirty streets filled with trash and leaves for most of the year. The city has street sweepers from April to November. During this time, keep an eye out for street signs, which say you can't park here during certain days and certain times, or you're going to get a big fat ticket. Nobody wants a big fat ticket. Now, it's common in most cities to have street sweepers. I get it. I've been to most major cities, and I can tell you, for some reason, Denver seems to be cleaner. A lot cleaner. Denver, in my experience, is one of the cleanest cities in the country. It's really nice. Now, if you're wondering why they don't have it from April to November, it makes no sense. It's, you know, bad weather, snow, and they probably won't be able to keep up with the leaves. Number nine, gambling. Colorado has some strict gambling laws. Luckily, 30 miles away from Denver is Blackhawk and Central City, where gambling is legal, and they do have full-size casinos. Like, real casinos, not watered-down versions that just have, like, blackjack and pie gow and poker, you know? These are full-on casinos. Now, I've never been to Blackhawk or Central City, but Subscriber Lane said that the casinos here are really nice and relaxing. She's also the one that told me they were full-blown casinos. Now, they are relaxing, they're nice, unless you're this dude. He has a problem with his middle finger or the Google Street View car. When I was a kid, my dad would tell us that someone that does that with their middle finger is dumb and they just want to show you what finger they use to pick their nose. In our teens, he switched it up to picking their butts. Now, I told my kids that this is an out-of-work proctologist protesting loss of proctology jobs due to automation. I don't think they believe me. Number eight, craft beer. Are you not a fan of big brand beers? Do you like beer that has tastes and not just some watery version of an ale? Good news, Denver goes big on craft beer. Denver has about 70 breweries and the beer economy is doing well for Denver. The Mile High City is right behind Portland, Oregon when it comes to the number of breweries. And we have a lot. Actually, I almost would say we have too many, but that's almost like saying too much Christmas. But still, I love beer. I love craft beer. I prefer dark beer. If you're in Denver, go to Hogshead Brewery and try the Imperial Stout if you like the dark beer. I'm telling you, it's worth going out of your way for. And their food's pretty good there too. Give it a shot. Number seven. Scenery. The Mile High City is a beautiful place to live. In the west, you've got breathtaking views of the mountains. You'll be able to spot Mount Evans... Gray's Peak. Then if you look to the east, you'll be able to see Kansas and Nebraska. Yeah, um, never mind that one. They suck in the scenery department. Unless, of course, you like cornfields and grass fires, then by all means, look east. But you should probably keep looking west. Those mountains are great. Number six, the food scene. Denver is the next big foodie city in the country. I promise you. And I hate the word foodie like I've said many times before, but I just got to use it. Since 2015, over 400 restaurants and food trucks have opened up in the city. Denver is a great place for people who don't like tight-fitting clothing. If you're chubby, you know what I mean by that. If you're skinny and go to the gym, you have no idea what I'm talking about. You can gain some inches in Denver. The good news is, if you're looking to jumpstart your plus-size modeling career, Denver may be the place for you. Three good places to go to, Senor Bear, El Taco de Mexico, and the Denver Deep Dish for pizza. Three of my favorite restaurants. Now, full disclosure, I don't like, like, Vietnamese food and Thai food and stuff like that. That. There's about five really good ones that were recommended to me that people love. I don't eat there, so I'm not going to talk about them, but they do have some really good places. Number five, schools. Denver has some really good public schools. High schools within the city rank at almost 80% college readiness, which is substantially higher than other cities at size. If you don't know, that's how they grade high schools for the most part. Our kids ready to go to college? And 80% is a really good number. I've seen schools and school districts in the 30% neighborhood. When you have 30% college readiness, you have to wonder who's not doing their job. And it's probably a lot of people, and they're probably in New Mexico.
Number four, skiing. If you ski, snowboard, build snowman, or just like riding on ski lifts, move to Denver. All that stuff's just a short drive away. Winter Park is the longest running ski resort in Colorado, and it's located just an hour outside of Denver. However, if you're willing to take a little bit longer of a drive, Vail Mountain has over 5,000 acres of skiable slopes. I mean, I really shouldn't have to tell 90% of you that you could ski in Colorado. I mean, that's common knowledge, but there's always that 10%. They probably are that same 10% that doesn't know you let everyone off the crowded elevator before you try and push your way on to the crowded elevator. Number three, jobs. Denver is a good place to go for a job. They have a lot of them. The city's unemployment rate is extremely low at 2.3%, and the jobs actually pay pretty good. The city's average annual income is about 53000 per year, which is higher than the national average. The good news is all the jobs aren't seasonal. I had someone leave a comment in one of my previous Colorado videos saying how most of the jobs in the state of Colorado are seasonal ski jobs. He's very adamant that most of them were. I explained to him that whatever hillside he'd lived on, it might be that way, but I assured him he could find year-round employment in Colorado if he were to leave his Unabomber hut in the Colorado Outback. He actually told me he was going to block me. Block me. It's not like I went to his channel and started talking trash and spewing nonsense. Number two, weed. In 2012, Colorado became one of the first states to legalize cannabis. Since the legalization, it's given 35,000 residents new jobs and has generated roughly $617 million. $617 million. And $40 million of that has gone to reconstructing schools. $617 million. That's a lot of weed. However, while this may be a deal breaker on your decision whether to live in Denver or the whole state of Colorado, it's good to note that only 13% of Denver residents actually use cannabis. I find it hard to believe only 13%. That means 650 of the 5 million residents bought enough weed to generate 617 million since 2012. That math doesn't seem right. That's what it says. And number one. Outdoor recreation and sun. Denver is one of the best cities for outdoor enthusiasts. Enthusiasts? That's another word like foodies. I hate the word enthusiast. I don't know why. Anyway, besides a nice drive and some skiing, you could take a pedal boat across Smith Lake in Washington Park or hike the Mile High Trail in City Park. There's an endless amount of activities to do in Denver. While outdoors, you get a heavy dose of sun, that is for sure in Denver, and all the vitamin D you can handle. The city gets about 300 sunny days a year. Summers are hot, but they get very little humidity, so Denver is very tolerable during the summer. Like I said in the other Denver video... You need sunblock in Denver, especially if you venture up to, say, one of the clothing optional resorts they have dotted around Denver. Yeah, there's parts of the human body that get a little tender when exposed to too much sun. And if you do go to one of those, make sure you apply sunscreen to those tender areas. And make sure you get a good quality sunscreen, too, because the cheaper ones you have to keep reapplying all day long. And, you know, then it looks a little weird at a nudist place if you're constantly reapplying sunscreen. You know what I mean? Anyway, if you like the outdoors, Denver is one of the best places for you to live. All right, so that's my top 10 reasons to move to Denver, Colorado. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope you got some information out of it. Don't forget all the links below. Like, dislike, leave me a comment. Tell me what you thought. What did I miss? I'd like to hear it. Everybody have a great day. Be nice to each other.